best computer for business really depends on the type of business you're running. If it's accounts or if it's uh, word processing where it's predominantly document based, if it's graphics, are you working in a loud environment like a factory? Do you need something where you're making podcasts so you need a quiet machine? Basically, there's seven or eight components, depending on what you need, that makes up a machine. I'm going to cover each of the components, about a minute or two on each of the components, and this is relevant for both PC or a Mac, and that will arm you, be it if you're thinking of specking your own machine, or if you're even going to build your own machine. That way you'll know what bits to ask for, what bits you could actually possibly upgrade in your existing machine that would give it new life. If this is your first time here and you want to grow your business using SEO, internet marketing and a computer, click the subscribe button now. It's free. It's YouTube's answer to favourites. Also turn on the bell notifications that way you don't miss out on any notifications. Now back in the 80s there was a machine, Commodore 64. This is a remake of that popular machine. Now it had components built on the board for, for example, sound, there was a chip on there called SID, Sound Interface Device, and that made sure this machine outperformed all of the other ones in the era for sound. Now, there is a move nowadays to actually build more and more components on the board, so you need less and less of these discrete items. Now, it can be a benefit and can improve thermals and stuff like that, or it could be a downfall depending which bits you pick and stuff like that. So on this video, I'm gonna go bit by bit and I'll start off with the motherboard and some of the bits that go on there. All the bits basically are either screwed in or just pushing so it's fairly easy to put up. So, and this is my first build so I'm hoping to get this done in an hour. The processor, does a better processor increase speed? Uh, simple answer to that, yes. If, if you've got a processor which is more beefier, so this is a nine in this particular range. You could have a seven, a five, this three. Um, the more powerful the processor, the faster things will happen, the less lag there'll be. So it'll crunch through data in spreadsheets faster. If you're rendering video with multi multiple effects, it will help with that, depending to the software. If you've got music applications and you're putting filters on, the same with that, less likely for it to be laggy. And it's also be more stable. Uh, if you've ever done something and you've, what your machine seems to freeze, it's probably because it's trying to st dump everything just to see if it can carry on and finish that calculation or that process or that effect. So if you've got a more beefier processor, you're less likely to see any of those lag issues and stuff like that. Uh, another thing, some of the processors will allow you to drive graphics. I'll cover that in a bit. Now, once you've determined which processor you're having, AMD, Intel, I think NVIDIA's uh, doing one as well. Apple's also working on its own processor. Obviously, if it's an Apple one, it'll be app all Apple components. It'll be built into their machine. Uh, once you've determined your processor, if it's a PC build, then you dictate which motherboard you're having. The motherboard, the communication center. Everything plugs into the motherboard or is connected via it if once, it's, once the case is closed. So here we've got connect, connections for HDMI, and display ports, these USB ports. If you've got a additional graphics card, that will go in this slot here. That'll give you, allow you to have more advanced graphics for more advanced video editing and gaming. Here is the processor. Once you've determined the processor, then it, dis then it determines the board. In this case, I'm having an AMD uh, processor. So this board is configured for AMD chipsets. If you're having an Intel, it would be an Intel board. It would look pretty much the same. On a laptop, the board is generally smaller and quite a few of the components, things like the memory and that, would be uh, potentially already soldered on the board. So they put less, there's less plugging in bits, more the, the bits are generally soldered on the board rather than user upgradable. They're normally fixed on the board, but that's the motherboard. Installing the processor is the simple act of popping this lever here. We take the chip, obviously handle this careful. It's got best part of 400 pounds, so we don't want to drop this. That's that placed. How much memory do I need? Really, it depends on what you're looking to do. 
generally most people say an entry level machine probably about eight gig i would say look at 16 now because going forward the megapixels in photos and your email attachments are going to get bigger and stuff like that so look at 16 as entry level um that should cover most people's needs light editing and stuff like that uh probably do 4k if you're doing um editing with lots of effects and stuff like that possibly look at uh, something bigger maybe 32 gig if you're doing app development or potentially uh, music and you've got loads of filters and instruments and stuff like that possibly 32 would be good on that on this one we're going to go with 64 gig if you've got a machine i generally asked will a machine make uh, will a memory upgrade make my machine run quicker uh, potentially if you've got a machine a couple of years old uh, memory might be one of your bottlenecks so sticking memory in uh, is a fairly easy upgrade if you're going to do it generally if you've got, if you've got a laptop uh, there might be a little slot you can open if it's a desktop uh, take your side panel off probably lay it down it'll probably be easier if your machine's laid down superman and spider-man they've got their superpowers uh, my superpower is my glasses to memory that once i've got it seated correctly push it down and that should just snap and lock in and this is a fairly large uh, as these are 32 you can get these in eights uh 16s and stuff like that so by going with 32 if i wanted to uh, add another uh, 64 I could use two slots there but if you have got a machine and you've got potentially some spare slots uh, the machine if it's a couple of years old you might be able to find you might be able to get uh, memory a good memory upgrade maybe for 30 40 dollars and that would actually that could double your amount of memory which could make the world of difference so uh, I'll come later on in a little tips you can do on your current machine that would make probably uh, give it some new life for maybe a year or two so Johnny asks, does adding more memory speed up my computer? Uh, no, it, it, it makes your computer last longer. Because if you run out of memory, if you're in the middle of a task and you run out of memory, what it generally needs to do is do memory dumps. So it needs to relieve some of the st stuff in its head. If you've ever seen Harry Potter, where Dumbledore takes a, uh, a wand to his head and uses a pensive to empty some, to give his brain more capacity. That's what your computer needs to do. If it's running out of memory, it then needs to write to your hard drive as a temporary swap file, do whatever it does to process and then bring that back from the hard drive. That's why sometimes your computer seems to be hanging. That's because it now needs to do something. It's full of memory, uh, it's memory's full. What do I need to do? I'll write that so I don't forget it onto the hard drive do a bit more processing and then bring that back so it's a bit like if you imagine if you've got a huge table the bigger your table the more things you can have on it at any one time that's your memory so even though i don't need this at this very moment it's there if i was running out of space i would then need to move it out of arm's reach so in effect the computer's processor i would need to move it out of the memory's reach to free up the memory and so every time i needed to do something i was inefficient so that's what happens when you oh, come on come on come on then it's done it then it needs to do something else and you're waiting so basically it makes your machine more laggy if you are into cad and design and stuff like that and um high-end video processing with multiple layers and filters and stuff like that do you, more memory the better within reason you're going to need obviously a good graphics card with that but that means you can pass stuff to the graphics card one thing that's worth bearing in mind some computers they have what is known as shared memory so this memory here also is used to drive the display so you've got some graphic capacity in your processor and that memory is used to drive your displays and your hd display or your monitors and stuff like that so sometimes this memory is now working to process stuff or pass stuff to the processor and handle the display so if you see something where it says it's got integrated graphics that means more than likely integrated graphics 
might be stealing memory. So if you've got 16 gig, it might be using four of that for display purposes. So that's leaving you with 12. That's why you'll see gamers and uh, video producers and stuff like that have dedicated graphics. So their graphic cards does not use this memory. This is purely for the computer to do its processing. So yeah, more memory, the better. And it's a quick, easy upgrade potentially on most computers. Also, what really be interesting to know what your first computer was. Was it a Windows computer? Was it a Mac? Was it something like an Amstrad, a Dragon, uh, an old IBM? Uh, was it a Commodore or Atari? Or was your first machine a mobile phone? Be nice to know, put it in the comments. Storage, how much storage do I need? That's a good question. A lot depends on what you're doing. Uh, if I cover some technology, over the years, storage has got considerably cheaper. But things like your phone cameras, they're sending larger and larger files. So if somebody's taking photos and you're receiving them and that, you'll probably find that you will need more storage over time than what you needed a couple of years ago. Now, a couple of bits on storage. Old-fashioned store. I say old-fashioned, this is still current. This is the hard drive, probably as we all know it, uh, three and a half inch hard drive. Generally, these come in two speeds is 5,400 revs and 7,200. So again, you could have a slow version of one of these hard drives versus the faster ones. So this is predominantly that most people have got if your machine's a couple of years old, it's likely to have this technology. So this is hard drive, lots of moving parts and it's got like a magnetic uh, uh, plates, a bit like the old uh, tape but it's on a disc and these move around, there's needles in there and all that kind of stuff. So these are mechanical hard drives. The modern equivalent now are SSD drives. So this is a one that would fit in a laptop or they generally use these in desktops as well, but considerably smaller. You're not got the issue of moving parts and stuff like that. Less, less drain, less power. So if you've got a laptop with this, these style doesn't uh, these style uses less power. The new technology, the new kid on the block is NVMe. If I get that right, let's see. That's NVMe, and these are minute. This one is uh, version um, generation four. Now this particular stick here has got five times the capacity of this drive this stick here so it's five drives sorry five times the capacity no moving parts doesn't use as much power obviously to drive that and easily install we take this push that in there then we'll push down we need a screw you can get smaller ones of these as well so That's it, I've now put one terabyte of storage. Another thing you can do to increase your storage is not to rely on your local machine. So if you've got capacity to put an extra hard drive in or a SSD, uh, by all means, another option is to actually either purchase enclosures or you can actually buy them already done for you, where you can obviously, again, you buy the hard drives they go into an enclosure like that. This is, there you go. As far as that, that's it. Now we've got an external hard drive, uh, USB 3, you can get USB uh, 3C. Uh, you can also get these MV, oh, let's check it again, MVME. You can actually get them, I've got one in the other office. And a similar type of thing, you slide them in, put the case in, and that's it. So that way, if you've got capacity for USB connections, you can create external storage without relying, or even in some cases, needing to open your machine. And again, if, you're, if you are up to about 80% full on your hard drive, things then start to slow down and it can't perform properly. So that's the same with your SSDs as well. So you probably never really want to push over 80% um, of maximum storage on the devices anyway. So another option is NAS. 
that's network attached storage. So I've got something called the Drobo, that's got five of these style drives in there, uh, bigger than this, but it's got five of these, and the way they work is the data is backed up. I either work from there or the data is backed up onto them, and the way it works is in those array of five, if two of them fail, the other three have got enough of the data to build it back so I can take out the fail drive, put it back in, and it will build the data. Also from that NAS attached uh, network attached storage to the NAS drive, uh, there's like Drobo, the Synology, there's quite a few out there. I'll leave links to those in the comments below. There's also cloud storage, so all of that is backed up so I can access it locally quickly, but that backup is then sent to the cloud where I use something called Live Drive, and that has a backup of my backup. And then obviously I've got the stuff on the local machines, be it the, the development machines, the rendering machines or the laptops we use. So that way everything's backed up on multiple occasions. So network attached stories allows you to be more flexible so you can attach your laptop and access those files or you can have a different machine like an Apple and attach those files. So that way you're not tied down to a machine. The nice thing that is if you lose a machine or a machine comp goes offline for some reason and stuff like that, you've still got all your files. And it's also, if you've got a small network, you can actually share it between your colleagues. So that's a NAS network attached storage. In the links below, I'll also give a breakdown on the storage and how much you can get on particular storage. So for example, how much does a thousand songs use? How much does a thousand photos use? And uh, how, how much a thousand typical Word documents use? So depending on what you're doing, you'll have an indication of how much space you need. Again, as technologies get better, the size of the photos that are on the, we'll pick on smartphones, the number of megapixels, they get increased. So obviously a thousand photos from your old Nokia 95 from 10, 15 years ago is not gonna be the same amount of space from a, a thousand 40 megapixel photos on a modern smartphone. So what I'll do, I'll give you a breakdown on um, those different applications, the data and how much space each of those use. So you'll have an idea of what would probably be the best solution for you. Most of the bits fitted, memory, storage, processor. The last few bits is three bits left basically. The next one is the cooler. This was the cooler that came with the processor. So sometimes if you order the processor, it might include a cooler. So in my case, I've gone for what is known as an aftermarket cooler, something a bit more beefier. So I've done this where, I'm, where this machine's gonna be going. It's not super well ventilated. So I'm hoping this will have a better uh, job or be more efficient at keeping this cool. So this goes in. Again, I, I will leave a video how to put the entire computer step by step. I'll leave that in description. But this will basically go on there there's a plate that fits over that and two screws and that will hold that down I've got to put a bit of paste down but then that's that installed again try to avoid touching any of these bits that says don't touch we're almost done we've got memory storage and processor once the cooler goes on and it's in the case then we'll add the graphics card the graphics card is going to be doing most of the heavy lifting as far as graphics and video rendi re rendering and potentially streaming. You don't need something as beefy as this if you're doing uh, medium work. So like photo editing, creating some posters and all that kind of stuff. Probably a smaller card with less, uh, less oomph will probably do the job, not a problem. Or you could probably get away with the integrated so it would generally use some of this memory and the processor to drive the graphics opposed to these dedicated cards. If, if you've got the money to spend and or you can make the money available, having a laptop or a computer with dedicated graphics will make a world of difference. You, will, you won't notice it until you've had it and then you'll, you'll never look back. So things like moving uh, sheets of data in uh, Excel and stuff like that, rendering out video, opening things, everything's just a bit more snappier. And if you're producing videos, you will notice that a video that would probably, once it's say a five minute video, could take something like 
maybe anything from half an hour to 40 minutes to render with a higher spec card, you could probably do that in minutes. We could be four or five minutes versus 40 minutes. So these cards do all the heavy lifting, but they're not particularly cheap. So graphics cards in. Next option, I haven't got one, but if you wanted to, you can put a graphics capture card. So that will actually capture a HDMI output from a more professional camera and feed it directly into your computer. You can also capture other computers or game consoles directly into the computer. That would then allow you to capture that footage for editing or for live streaming. And again, if you're live streaming, using a more professional camera than the teeny little webcam thing, these things, which generally, I mean, they do a reasonable job, but obviously a more professional camera is gonna really level up your production. Uh, so you can either use a capture card or you can use a device like a Camlink. This is great if you are using it on different machines, that's why I've gone with this. But you can use this also on things like a reasonably good powerful laptop and that would take your signal and do the same thing. What I'll do, I'll leave links to all of these, all the bits I've used and stuff like that. I'll leave links to that and also a bit of a updated help guide because obviously some of these things over the time will get replaced with other more modern equivalents. So I'll leave updates to them on my website. Uh, and again, if you do click on the links, there are gonna be affiliate links and I get a bit of a kickback anyway. It doesn't cost you any more, but I'll leave those links in the notes below. Last two items. Next, power supply, all important. One thing I have gone for is a quality brand. Two reasons. A, because obviously everything I've brought now is going to be taking power from this particular device. So I don't really want to skimp here. Uh, another reason I've gone for this uh, Be Quiet brand is I've probably gone a bit over on the power. I probably would have got away with a 550. I've gone with this, so I've got some headroom. So if I do have anything or add anything to the computer that needs a bit more power, this will be able to do it without breaking a sweat. Also, if the power doesn't, if there's more than enough power, it doesn't over, it doesn't send more power than the computer needs. It just means it's got to work less at giving that power and creating heat. Uh, another reason I've gone for this one, it's rates pretty well for being quiet. On my machine below, I had an issue with the power probably about four years ago and had that replaced and hadn't noticed immediately but one on a quiet day I was thinking that power is really that, it, that computer's really loud and it was so much so it got kicked out of the main office and for two years it was outside in the passageway with leads going back into the office and it was actually i tested it a couple of weeks ago and it was actually the power supply which was making it sound really loud the computer itself has got loads of holes for airflow and all that kind of stuff which probably didn't help suppress the sound but it was actually the power supply itself making the sounds or the you know the fan whirring and all that kind of stuff this particular one uh, reviews really well and is supposed to be nice and quiet and it is actually modular as well so the leads now you'll see some it doesn't it doesn't uh, matter really so you'll see there's no leads dangling out of here so if you get a modular supply normally you can plug in what powers you need. So obviously I need board power and I need power to the graphics and stuff like that. But if this powers, if some of these I don't need, I just don't plug in the leads. Obviously I keep them for future upgrades. Now there's some power supplies, you'll save some, you'll save some money, but they'll have all, all the leads regardless if you need them or don't. Again, if you don't use them, you just leave them at the bottom of your case. That will save pun, uh, some money, but definitely go for a good brand, probably check some reviews on the efficiency so this is a rated power i think it's is it gold here it goes yeah 80 plus gold they've got ratings on there so you want a power with a good rating on there because that means it's efficient it's delivering more power than it's what do you call it turning into heat and also it's likely to protect your devices as well because obviously this drives power to all your expensive other bits with inside your case. Now the final bit is obviously the case. Um, I will show a finished shot of once it's all assembled and stuff like that. But the case itself, why I went for this, again, uh, reviews quite well. This particular company, Be Quiet, they've got a couple of cases. Uh, some of them have got uh, 
solid panels on both sides and then they have them with uh, insulated material so uh, sorry that's probably the wrong word not insulated sound dampening so the idea is then the case is even more quiet now i would have loved to have gone for that but as i said i've probably got a vent the office i am don't get an awful lot of um, ventilation so i would run the risk of the entire unit being amazingly quiet but being throttled because it gets too hot so this particular one is probably a good compromise both for being quiet and also good air flow. Yeah, the case below, I'll show photos, loads of air holes, good airflow. The only problem with that is well as it being quite loud, it also meant that the dust levels in that case was quite a lot. I cleaned it down every couple of months, but it would build an awful lot of uh, dust bunnies. So this particular one, uh, not only this, quite a few of the modern, more modern, modern ones, the more modern ones have things like this which is a mesh filter so the holes at the top if I show that to the camera if you can pick that up I've actually got a this filter there just how it's held with magnets so that's like that so if I wanted to take it off dust it clean it at the bottom where the power supply is or will be there's also a vent there but again with the filters these filters come out they can be obviously de-dusted or vacuumed and stuff like that so all of this is to help not fill up inside with dust because that's the last thing you want if your components fill up with dust these units here are trying to keep these cold um, I'm not sure if it's an official term or something I made up donkeys years ago, but he actually called it blanketing. So if you imagine your dust bunnies or your dust over time sitting on these chips and all that kind of stuff, like uh, blankets. So you end up, these components are trying to keep cool and you've got a blanket of dust. Basically they're struggling and if the components get hot, the computer, for want of a better word, panics and actually slows things down. If you get too much dust in, uh, parts like the fan and that you can actually stop them from turning so yeah dust can be a pain when it comes to computer so the case itself the front actually pulls out takes a bit of effort hence i've done it off camera um but the front pulls off there is a connection there you don't have to worry about it it's all just that connects to some connections there which controls the light this particular case is really nice it's got some subtle lighting around the front um so that goes there but then also on the front which is where most of the way this is going to be configured this is where most of the air will be coming this filter then can be taken off cleaned put back so it could be maintenance that you do every i mean it depends to the environment but it could be something you do every six months every year something like that and that will just maintain let's see yep that's nicely done so that fits in there the case itself has uh, obviously the front fan uh, so the cool air is going to be drawn from the front so the air is going to be drawn through the filters through here and it's going to come across the, ca uh, the case it's going to hit here where the cool uh, the components are going to be that big air cooler on top of the processor, that's gonna then cool that down. The hot air is gonna be right here. The idea is then it's gonna be sucked out with this fan. It's gonna pull, this fan's gonna pull out. And basically the idea is, and there's a fan here. So the idea is cool from the front coming across the components and hot coming out being exhausted. So that's the configuration. There is more space for additional fans. So this has got three. If I wanted to, I could probably put another two in there quite easy, or I could put a radiator if I wanted to go with a more liquid cool. That's it, I've gone with air cool. So, and this case on this, on the back panel, uh, that comes off and all the kind of, all the wire, which then goes on the board and all that kind of stuff is hidden behind here, nice and tidy. Literally the entire, if you ever fancy doing Meccano, if you can do air fix, if you can do needle craft, that means you're quite patient it's, it doesn't take too long probably it should be once i start doing this should all be done within about an hour but it just takes a bit of time you can refer to manuals this is what i'll be doing so you can refer to manuals there's 
instructions what to do and stuff like that. The motherboard tells you where you need to put which um, pins to do with the power. So like here, if I, if I zoom in, so if I go there, there's a, there's a lead there. That's obviously for this fan and that's gonna go on to the motherboard and it actually, the motherboard is marked up to which positions these go on there. So is building your own machine gonna be for everybody? Probably not, but hopefully I'll just give you some of the bits that you're gonna need. So if you are thinking of going to get a machine do done, I'll leave you links to, there's a company called CyberPower where you can go on their website and actually go, oh, okay, I like the look of this machine, and hopefully some of the stuff's probably, okay, I want one of these, or I want something that can do that. So rather than I give you model numbers, which could potentially be out of date in six months, I want a component that can do that for me. You can go on their website and actually look at a machine already built, and you might go, okay, I want that machine. And then you've got the option, if you wanted to, to actually cherry pick those components, say, okay, I want this and this and this and that, Maybe if you wanted to go to another site and actually order it. I ordered mine from three different locations, including Amazon, uh, eBuyer, and another scan, I think it was. So I ordered mine through there. But in fairness, I did spec it out on one of these part builder sites. So there's, um, I'll leave links to those. So that way you know what bits you are selecting actually works with all the components you're picking. Those, those sites are brilliant. If you want to, you can just Audi machine direct with him. The machine I've got below, I had from CyberPower, and that's 11, it still works. It's, and it'll probably stay as this setup. I'll probably turn more of this into a retro setup for other projects, a bit of leisure time away from work. Um, and this machine is 11 years old. I've had to change the power and I had to change the graphics, but for a machine, and I've upgraded the hard drive to an SSD to speed it up. But that machine's 11 year old, no problem with processor, no problem with any of the components beside power but my machines are on 24 7 and in fairness so i've probably got something like 22 years 30 years wear of average use from the machine below i will put some photos of that one and that's from cyber power so if you think okay i don't really want to get a screwdriver out and stuff like that by all means go to them spec it out with them or there's pc part picker or something like that i'll leave links to them that's another website where you can actually pick the bits you want and another thing you can do on their website is, okay, I want a machine to do this. So I want a machine that's capable of editing video, or I want a workstation machine, or I want a machine that will play games and that kind of stuff. And they will give you both a kind of like low end, middle end and a high end and absolute good service. And if I, if I do find an affiliate link, I'll definitely set that up. Um, so that will be an affiliate link if I can find one. If not, it'll be a straight link. But CyberPower, definitely recommend them. As I said, the machine I've got underneath worked and it's, it's bedtime. Uh, the machine I've had for 11 years, solid, recommend them. But this time I just wanted to do it myself. If any is do it myself, I'm probably gonna save about four or 500 pounds. And it's something I can say I've done. If you have found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, a like, and definitely click the subscribe button. The main focus of the channel is gonna be business related, but the amount of customers I've had that's asked for what bits do I need for my computers and stuff like that. Now, I don't support customers with computers and stuff like that, but I've definitely recommended either suppliers or what bits they can use. So I'm just passing the information on to yourself. As I say, day to day, this channel is gonna be covering SEO, marketing, and video and stuff like that to grow your website and e-commerce and tips on that. So definitely click the subscribe button, tap the bell for all notifications. It's actually been a week uh, or just over a week since I actually finished the installation. Went together really easy, nice and straightforward. Did make a mistake where I connected the uh, cooler um, to uh, an incorrect header. No problem, just had to disconnect it. Probably if I read the manual completely instead of thinking, I know where this goes. Uh, but beside that, one thing I did like is the case I've got uh, the actual power pack, actually, uh, the way that went in was absolutely brilliant. Obviously, each case is going to be slightly different, but the engineer on the Be Quiet case was absolutely brilliant, the way the power pack, you actually fit the power pack to a plate and then slide in the plate. Absolutely easy, nice, nice install, which then means if I want to, for some reason, to take it out, I can actually disconnect, pull out. Filters in the system is brilliant. The top and uh, the side, 
oh sorry the top and the front and obviously at the bottom so that means they can come out easily the computer actually isn't in the office because this office is just under five feet by seven feet there's no actual di direct ventilation here so you could actually hear the fans whirring up a bit and i do plan to do some audio recording here so it's actually the other side of the door um it's quite enough that side but obviously when it's in here no ventilation you can hear the fans whirling it's trying to use the ambient air of the room to keep the computer cold there is no ventilation so it's actually overworking the computer unnecessarily but beside that absolutely brilliant uh definitely um well over um, spec for what i need currently now, do you need to spend all your money on a brand new PC? Not necessarily. Uh, if your PC is a couple of years old and it's just stopped performing as well as it used to, uh, a couple of things that could be causing that. First of all, open it up, see if it needs a dusting and a hoovering. If you have a uh, dust buildup on your components, it's actually causing something called blanketing. So as a, if you imagine a, a blanket of dust on your components actually forces them if they can't cool down to actually throttle so they don't work at their optimum so definitely dust it out uh, and hoover it that will, you should do that every uh, at least once a year anyway depending to your environment another thing to look at is your hard drive if you've maxed out or is if you've gone over 80 percent of your hard drive that's going to stop your hard drive working to its optimum as well so definitely look at clearing some of the stuff off. If you've got an old mechanical hard drive in there, definitely look at an SD or probably uh, definitely swapping out an SD and maybe having an external hard drive. Uh, again, this is um, a new format one. Uh, those will actually give you an opportunity to offload your content. And if you put an SD, it could load considerably faster. So upgrading your hard drive could be for less than a hundred dollars and you would see a marked improvement in your computer uh, potentially memory if you uh, imagine the more memory you've got the more things you can do every time you open a chrome tab for example it uses memory so if you're running out of memory it th then needs to go do i do this do i do this or do i put this down so i can do this in my limited memory if it's got to put down stuff um or write it to the uh hard drive and stuff like that that means it's going to pick it up and all these little processes slow you down so if look at your machine does it need a uh, hard drive uh update to an ssd if i cleaned it out and stuff like that would that make an improvement and have i got some spare slots to throw in some memory some of those enhancement could give you more life in your computer. Initially, when I brought my previous machine 11 years ago, it's had a new power pack, it's had a new uh, cooler, and I've added a bit more memory in it. So I've actually eked out a few more years, probably, than most users would be, opposed to just throwing it away. So if you're quite happy, uh, if you can put it together a Christmas present, uh, some of these kids' toys and stuff like that nowadays are quite complicated. If you can do something like that, you can certainly open up your PC, uh, obviously turn off the power and do a bit of maintenance on there. Uh, just be careful if you're using Hoover not to any, uh, not, uh, knock anything hard. Uh, either use a dry paintbrush or something like that, something that hasn't been contaminated, and just brush the uh, dust and all that off your machine. And you'll probably find you can get another couple of years out of it. Or at least it'll be a, a good second machine for other things, particularly if you're using your plan to do live streaming and stuff like that. It'd probably be a great machine to receive comments and stuff like that on. PC all nice and built. Now the next thing is to do other things now with this PC using the internet to grow a business that's the main focus of this channel but i have been asked by a couple of people how do i uh, make improvements to my pc and stuff like that i need a new pc so i thought it was worth doing a video on it also bear in mind the apple have recently launched their new m um, range and that's actually quite an impressive set of um, hardware i've actually got one here um it runs quiet that's why it's in here it runs quiet. there's no um fan in the entry level model of the air this one there's a fan in it i've had it open and done some videos and stuff like that i haven't even heard the fan come on so this is going to be brilliant for recording podcasts as well definitely if you're after a quiet machine possibly look at the uh, apple m1s even if it's just for audio production the reason i went with a pc i do need i have got a workflow on using windows so i need to maintain that so hopefully this video is helpful give us a likes and a thumbs up 
Uh, click subscribe if you haven't. I've got videos coming up on all kinds of things on growing your business and also some hacks using light, getting your camera mounted on the wall. I have actually got another camera behind this camera mounted on the wall and a little gadget hanging out there, which means my production and my process time is actually saved because I don't have to keep faffing with the camera. But I'll cover that in another video. So definitely click subscribe so you don't miss out on any other videos. I'll turn up in some really useful information in these videos here. So I'll see you in them.